Hello, this is episode 10.3 and I'm going to continue um, talking about um, some more memories I had uh, with my aunts um, at my mama's house and some other memories I had that from that age. So the um, one thing was uh, that I remember was um, Around that time, um, my uh, youngest Atteya, my Radhatteya was, uh, uh, she was still in college, but um, she had begun staying, um, obviously after after her wedding at my Amama's uh, uh, house. And uh, she started uh, uh, giving uh, tut tutoring uh, lessons to, uh, some neighborhood kids so uh, because i used to used to hang out there i remember that uh, uh, there was this uh, family uh, of like three muslim kids two boys one boy was my age exactly and uh, one was four or five years old and there was a young girl i think she was she was between the two she was about you know seven years old or so so they used to come to uh, <laughs> tutoring lessons with her and uh, sometimes I would also join. It was like so much fun because I was like, oh my God, my aunt is like, uh, my ate is a teacher and I'm taking a lesson with her. So, uh, but the main reason I would join that is because this youngest boy, I remember he was like the cutest little boy. He used to be so chubby cheat and... Uh, I remember this uh, poem that uh, my, um, uh, from his nursery rhyme book that my uh, youngest aunt, my Atteya, used to make him repeat. And the way uh, he used to say it, just to watch that, I used to take the, <laughs> those lessons. I used, to, I used to keep telling her, make him say it again, make him say it again, make him say it again. Because the first time I saw that they were taking these lessons was, I saw that little kid, I don't remember his name. Uh, I think the older um, kid's name was Vasim, I think. And I don't remember the little little one's name. But uh, I remember the poem, though. It was, uh, and the way he used to say it, it was like, Oh, look at the moon. He's, uh, uh, she's, he's shining so high. Uh, it is shine, shining so high. Oh, look at the moon. It is shining so high. Oh, mother, it looks like a lamp in the sky. <laughs> I remember this poem, but I am not saying it cutely. Like, we used to have these chubby cheeks and used to say it so earnestly. So I remember that. I'm sure my Atteya remembers those, uh, those three kids, especially this little one and this, and this nursery rhyme. So around that time, uh, my uh, Atteya used to also um, like taking walks in the neighborhood. She, she really walked a lot um, in the evening and uh, she would take, uh, she'd actually take uh, me and uh, my sister if we were there. And my sister was only two, but she was already talking and walking. She was very, very advanced for her age, very, very advanced. So she was talking full fledged. She started talking when she was like literally like one, which is very advanced. And uh, she used to like walk properly like a, like a four year old and talk like a four year old also. Um, so we used to go for walks um, with my Atteya. The other thing I remember around that, uh, around that age is there used to be a lot of uh, uh, messaging and communication in TV and TV used to be used as a medium to communicate about, uh, you know, vaccinations and family planning and uh, the effects of, you know, uh, you know, uh, age spacing between the kids and uh, when to get married. Like it was really used. Uh, that was a, again, like I said, it was such a different day and age. They used to use TV as a medium to educate uh, the people in the villages, the people in the, you know, even cities. Everybody, even regular educated people, uh, they used to uh, have little, little plays about, you know, how you should not have too many kids and how you should, 
uh, you know, how you should uh, um, plan the family with only two kids and how there should be like an age gap of three years at least. Um, and these messages had a very, very big impact on me. Like somehow I saw so many of these plays that I got stuck in my head that you should not have an age gap. You should have at least an age gap of three years between the kids. I don't know why that's, I, I, I don't think that's, uh, I, in hindsight, I don't think that that's maybe correct, but uh, so that got stuck in my head. So even when I uh, grew up and got married and it was time for me to have kids, I'm like, no, I want an age gap of three, three years. That was that strong. And during that time, they used to also emphasize a lot about vaccinations, um, uh, not flu vaccines and stuff. The bigger, uh, you know, endemics such as, uh, and also uh, viral uh, um, disease uh, conditions like the diseases or whatever, um, like polio or, you know, smallpox, chickenpox. Smallpox was eradicated by then. In fact, um, uh, I think I got a smallpox vaccine, but I never actually got smallpox. Around the time I was like uh, four years old, it was eradicated, I think, uh, from the world. Um, of course, it's there in labs and stuff, but it was eradicated, this thing. But uh, these other uh, things were still there. So I got so influenced by it. I used to get very upset uh, at home that uh, my sister was not, uh, uh, was not, uh, up to date on her uh, vaccinations, my baby sister. She was two years old, so she was not up to date on her vaccinations. I used to ask my parents and they say, oh, no, no, we'll get it. But I used to get so worried that, and I used to become so preachy at home. She's like, she'll get polio if you don't give her the polio vaccination. And she'll like, you know, so I got so worried about this that one day I actually uh, told my uh, told my uncle that I'm, uh, when we asked my uncle, he said, yeah, yeah, bring her to the clinic anytime, I'll give it to her. So I actually made an appointment with my, and I was only 10. I'm so proud of this. I felt so proud of this. I'll remember it forever. I actually uh, made an appointment with my Maya and said to this evening, I'll bring my sister. So after, you know, um, so-and-so evening, we were home that day for some reason. We had already gone home. We didn't go from the, from the, from my grandma's house to my home. I actually hired a rickshaw on my own, and I took my sister. It was my the first time I actually took my sister alone by myself, very first time. I was only ten and she was two, and I took her to my mom's clinic, and I gave her a, got her a polio vaccination. <laughs> So she must have got so upset <laughs> that she maybe she doesn't remember actually she was only two but <laughs> but I can remember the babies more feelings were coming back I actually got her the polio vaccination at that time um, and then brought and I felt so responsible and I felt so good about myself that I did that so proud I was very proud I still am proud that I did that because when I look back, I was only 10. <laughs> so, and I did this, this was my own like initiative. So I remember that incident. The other thing I remember is again, my uh, Pinny used to, uh, you know, continue, uh, was living there. And uh, of course my Baba was in the US doing his masters. The other thing uh, I remember is we used to play a lot of games uh, and my, uh, Pinni and my Maya used to still play like kids uh, and my Atte also because actually when you look at it they were all kids they were all under 25 uh, they were all like you know of course my Maya was uh, older but still uh, you know my Atteya was hardly like 19 at that time and uh, uh, my my Pinni would have been around <clears throat> you know 20 uh, 25 ish 24, 25-ish. My Maya was about 29-ish. So they were actually all very young. But uh, the nice part about having those young uncles and aunts all around is we used to play a lot of games with the neighborhood kids. Again, my Pinny was the main orchestrator of those games. So the one game I remember is, uh, it used to be called uh, 
Chikatata, which is like the darkness game. <laughs> so I'll tell you what that game is. So frequently there used to be power cuts in in all neighborhoods in in uh, in India in all cities actually frequently power cuts. So everything would go pitch dark. So in my house, my mama used to have a lot of candles and all that. So she used to bring them. My amma's house only had one candle. Uh, so and sometimes they didn't even like that. Sometimes they wouldn't even find that. So uh, at any given point of time, we used to have those long taper candles and my amma's house used to have a couple of small stubby candles, you know, that uh, they used to keep. Uh, when it got melted, my amma would actually make candles at home. She would take the melted wax, she would not throw it away and remelt it, put a thread in it and make a new candle out of it. Uh, so it was stubby in the shape of whatever jar she used to make the candle in. <laughs> so, so, uh, so anyways, the thing is, the game was, uh, when it, the power cut happened, it was pitch dark. All the kids used to come out to play. This is true for all Indian neighborhoods, not this thing. But my, uh, sometimes we started off when the power cuts happened, but later on they would actually deliberately turn off the lights and do that. So what they would do is, uh, they either the during the power cut or they'll turn off all the lights in the home at, at night, uh, close all the curtains. And then all these kids used to gather and it was like a hide and seek, but you didn't need to... Uh, close your eyes and you didn't need to go very far to hide. You could hide somewhere in a corner in plain sight, but uh, but you couldn't see because it was so dark. So somebody would count until 100 or 50 and then all the kids and the adults in that pitch darkness, they would hide. So they, you didn't need, unlike, unlike traditional hide and seek where you need to go somewhere very far off and find closets and all to hide. Here you could just hide, you know, behind a chair or under a table or just in a corner, you could just stand there and you couldn't tell because it was pitch dark. <laughs> and then you would find, you would find where people are hidden. And once you tag one person, that person would search. This was my favorite game, favorite game, because remember I told you I was not very athletic. So in this, there was no athletic prowess needed. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas in all other games, you have to run somewhere, you have to tag somebody, you have to do Coco. There used to be a game called Coco. I used to hate that game because it, it was all running, running, running. <laughs> I used to hate another game called Kabaddi. I used to hate that game also. It was, and Four Stones. I mean, all these games people love because, but I, I, I was not athletic at all. I didn't like being, I didn't like running. I still don't. So I used to love walking though with my, uh, with my youngest aunt. So that was one more game. The other thing uh, that uh, my youngest aunt, my Pinny, um, used to do is, they used to, um, uh, once she actually told me, uh, she told me that uh, I'll take you to, uh, there's this mutt that I started going to. It's very, very nice. I'll take you all there. Uh, and during that time, my Pinny's cousin, Padmaja, she had also come to spend the summer or something with my Amama from Ungol. So she was also there, I remember. And Sumita like was there and uh, all the neighborhood kids were also there. So she uh, said it's a Ramakrishna mat. It's a, it's a, it's not a religious place, but it's a, but it's a mat. So uh, I was not at all interested. It seemed like so like, you know, boring and uh, you know something a child wouldn't get excited about um, because she said it's very serene it's very quiet it's different people just meditate there there's no puja or arti or anything like that people just come and meditate there uh, and uh, maybe there used to be an arti but definitely there's no ritualistic too much ritualistic worship um, so she said it's very serene so I was not interested in it at all, but I didn't want to be left out because I wanted to spend time with my, I really enjoyed spending time with uh, my uh, Pinni, Satyas, Mahayas. I really enjoyed spending time with them. Uh, so I didn't want to be left out. So I said, yes, but I actually wasn't interested in this, in going to the place. So uh, up until then I had never traveled in uh, in a bus except for 
other than from there used to be a bus stop called welfare welfare center from there taking a bus and two stops down was uh, our bus stop medi patnam coming home with lakshmi that was the only bus experience i had that to coming back not going there so i didn't uh, ever uh, do like public trans uh, transit going to other uh, spots you know uh, go traveling in a bus going to other places i didn't know that concept i knew people traveled in buses but i had never done that uh and there used to be a lot of kids right so obviously we couldn't go in auto it used to be it would have taken 2 3 4 autos it was very expensive to go in autos um for a, a typical middle class person they would not go use autos we used to use autos all the time but uh, my pinny's house and all they mostly traveled in buses so uh, so that was the first time i got exposure it used to be so much fun and uh, like i said my pinni she never distinguished between oh these are old people these are young people these are my age like she did not do that like she uh, gathered whoever wanted to come so all the neighborhood kids of all ages she gathered including me my sister was too young so she, uh, she never joined because she was only a baby and then uh, it used to be so much fun because uh, sometimes at at the same time she wanted to make it fun so so she'd make sure that we got into a double decker bus and uh, she would not <laughs> i remember this she would not stand ever like in the main bus stop the 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 the, the bus when it when it stops there's too much rush to get in and she didn't want us all to be jostled so she would stop actually always like 25 steps away and after everybody got in she would go and stand like this <laughs> on the road she would stop the bus and it was like vip treatment we would all get in it, she would always stand, stand like 25 feet away up, away from the bus stop so the main bus would stop pick up everybody where people are like getting jostled and getting in and then the bus would take off and then 25 feet away she would go <laughs> stop it like flag it down and of course if you flag it down they won't stop she would actually go in this road and stop it like this and then she would make us all get in that was so much fun and they would then we would go upstairs and she would make sure we are all seated sometimes you would would be very crowded we would not have seat we would have standing room only and then um, so anyways that's the first time that she took me to like ramakrishna mart and it was in hyderabad and uh, it was for me a very transformative experience like i immediately felt uh, i did not know what to expect and i wasn't expecting much i was actually expecting to be bored uh, like i said for me it was more about the time spent with my pinni but when i went there it was a very transformative experience everything that she said was true it was uh, truly like the most serene like they you have a beautiful garden and then you go in and uh, they have this uh, the whole floor is carpeted they have that reddish pinkish uh, brick reddish pink carpet they had uh, all over and then of course there is an idol of uh, idol or a murti of uh, um uh, sri ramakrishna uh, over there and uh, there used to be very quiet soft meditative music playing in the background and there used to be some uh, benches more like uh, how you have in churches like the pews and uh, or you could sit on the floor the benches i think were for older people and then you could sit on the floor and we just sat on the floor like very quietly and uh, and uh, we didn't realize but actually we were meditating right sometimes even as a 10 year old i didn't know it was meditation but we just sat there like you know for you know half an hour 45 minutes just focusing on nothing like making the blind mind blank and peaceful um and now when i look back we were actually meditating but we didn't know we were meditating it was so peaceful and uh, after that first time that i went there i really really enjoyed going there um, i would really look forward to when she would take us there she would not always we would not always go there but frequently we would go there and uh, 
that's when I I think uh, very young age I got I understood the difference between like you know being uh, you know religious and being spiritual at a very young age I didn't know these words but I knew kind of instinctively knew the difference um and uh, I'm a quite a religious person actually <laughs> but but that kind of got me in touch with my uh, spiritual side also and uh, what probably nobody knows uh, is that I haven't shared with many people is uh, there are times in life uh, many times in my life uh, where especially in high school where I felt like uh, challenged or all alone I would many years after um, my um, my pinny left for USA also I would I knew the bus route right I would go there all alone um, and I would just sit there for half an hour 45 minutes just by myself and I would take the bus I would go it was pretty far off um, I'd go there take the bus sit there and come back so uh, it used to uh, give me a lot of peace and a lot of relief uh, at times when I felt alone or or stressed or troubled by something that happened to me uh, you know so it was very nice it was a like a gift I'll always uh, cherish that my pinny gave me by introducing me to that <laughs> to that aspect within myself so and the other thing that was uh, uh, fantastic was um, you know there used to be like I used to love movies because by this time uh, just by observing people so much just by the fact that I was uh, quiet uh, I hadn't, uh, I had begun to take a very much an interest in people and movies, stories of people, uh, stories uh, surrounding people, things that happen to people. So the movies for me an outlet of all that, of those stories. So, uh, um, so, uh, but uh, my parents by that time had stopped uh, uh, going to so many movies mainly because uh, uh, by the time I was around 10 a lot of uh, the mainstream movies there's only two sets of movies the mainstream or parallel cinema parallel cinema my family all liked but I found it too boring it, there was nothing like interesting to me in it and mainstream movies mostly had there were no love stories or drama or anything like that most of them were very violent, uh, most of them. And then there was this third genre of movies, which were dramas, but uh, which my mother was very sensitive to, that they had mature themes. By mature themes, it's not like they were uh, R-rated or X-rated or R-rated, but they had mature themes, which she felt was too mature for a, a child that young to be exposed to. Uh, but so there was this not for children set of movies again don't get it confused for R-rated movies it's not R-rated so but it's like it's, it's like concept the concepts in those movies uh, e regardless of the certification my mother felt those were not something that a, a child that young should be exposed to so I was never allowed to see uh, many of those movies but I was always curious so my Banupini was my window to all those movies because she would watch all those movies and in great detail she'd tell me the stories of all those movies <laughs> like scene to scene it was I by the time I she told me the story I I felt that I actually saw the movie <laughs> many times I I knew the scene to scene movie so when I many years later I saw it I felt I'd already seen it so the um, uh, movie stories that she told me was, uh, you know, Masum. So Masum actually everybody thinks it's a kid's movie, but actually it's not a kid's movie. It has one kid's song. It has many kids in it, but it's not a kid's movie. Basically it deals with uh, a, a person has uh, an extramarital affair and has an illegitimate child. And it's, uh, and then the mother dies and then it's the struggle of the current family accepting that child the current the his wife trying to accept that child so it's a very mature theme um, that see that story blow by blow scene by scene uh, my pinny told me <laughs> even though i was not allowed to see it <laughs> then there was another uh, movie called uh, um uh, 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 nalbayed rozulu 47 days 
so that movie was about again mature theme it's about uh, an nri person uh, played by chiranjeevi and then uh, the wife is played by jay prada he takes her he takes her to the us it's an arranged marriage it just gets uh, they just see each other and within two days he says yes and she's from a village she doesn't know english or anything but when he takes her and keeps her home um, she realizes that uh, he already is married and he's living with uh, with a white uh, american lady he takes her to america and then uh, and then he's not uh, nice to her at all he tortures her and all that and then the rest of the movie is how she tries to get away from him how she tries to get back to india and there is like some domestic violence also in it uh, some pretty uh, you know um, horrible person he's not she is she is really trapped in it and uh, when uh, so but again that also scene to scene scene by scene dialogue to dialogue uh, she told me that whole story <laughs> so that story also i was not supposed to see but she told me all the story then there was uh, another movie called uh, vasanta kokila um, which is sadma in uh, in uh, hindi so that movie also it uh, deals with some mature uh, concepts there's a there's a young uh, lady who uh, who uh, um, uh, actually uh, who loses her memory she has an accident and she loses her memory and she uh, regresses like she becomes like a child when she loses her memory like she regresses in age and uh, she is sold to a brothel and uh, somehow the hero rescues her from the brothel and uh, and and looks after her like a baby but eventually she gets back her memory and then she just leaves and then in the movie there's also this hero has a boss and the boss has a wife who's trying to seduce him always you know she's trying to like you know seduce him to you know have a, 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 an affair with her a relationship with her so this is also a very mature theme but this movie also seen to seen like i was not allowed to see it but i literally saw it because she told me the story of this movie also seen to seen seen to seen seen to seen <laughs> then there's another movie there's another movie called padharella vayasu okay that also had sri devi this um, this vasanta kokila also had sri devi so that padharella vayasu uh, is uh, uh, you know um, is a basically uh, a very young girl village girl and there's a doctor who comes in from the city a little bit older you know significantly older to her and uh, she falls in love with him and he just pretends that he's in love with her but actually completely exploits her uh, and uses her and eventually i think he gets married like he comes back but he has a wife with him and uh, Uh, and she begs and pleads but he say, he says oh i was just like using you and i re- and she told me this like scene like you know i i'm saying i remember actually don't i didn't see the movie I, until many years later when i was like 25 or 26 i saw the movie but uh, he smokes uh, like you know he's smoking a cigarette he says oh this is just like a cigarette use and throw it it discards a cigarette or something like that so uh, later on she goes through a lot of depression but then she finds love uh somebody who she finds who um her true love you know uh who is like a village simpleton but he really really loves her you know um i believe she also there's a rape scene also in it like i think she even the, there's a village person uh, uh, a local goon in the village who rapes her i think i think but um, but this is the main story is the how the doctor uses her that movie also she told me scene to scene again these are all very mature themes Uh, for a ten-year-old, these are mature themes. These are not; uh, they were not R-rated, but uh, this is something that my uh, mother, especially, didn't want me to be exposed to. Like all these things that happen in uh, um, in uh, in the grown-ups world. But uh, uh, so then she told me this, and then there is another movie called Aragolabi, where there's like you know there's a um, mentally. Uh, um he's like a serial killer because of some incidents that happened to him some exploitation that happens to him uh when he's a when he's a kid 
uh, and then he he goes on a killing spree. <laughs> These are all like so. Uh, this one she didn't explain to me scene to scene. This one I think actually I figured it out. I begged and begged, and she says no, no, this is too dark. I won't tell you. This story she didn't tell me, so I got even more curious when I grew up. And I, but all the other movies she literally told me scene to scene. <laughs> so, but um, in I'm almost over time. But when I go to episode, is it ten point four? I think this is ten point three. But anyways, in my next episode, I'll tell you how all these like all these uh, stories like they actually saved my life a couple of times. So I'll tell you those <laughs> those incidents. But maybe. But uh, uh, but anyways. Uh, but because of this, I actually uh, enjoyed all this and also learned a lot because I think actually it's important for kids around middle school age uh, to actually know that not everything is so we all give them like we all grow up sheltered lives. But I think it's good for them to know that there are bad people in the world, people who lie, who cheat, who will hurt you will use you. I think it's good for them to be aware that those things happen. Otherwise, their, you know, their, their uh, receptors are not on for those things. If they think eh, all the world is rosy, all the world is beautiful, they don't, I think it's, it's good to fun around middle, middle school years is the right time, I think, to start understanding that all these things can happen. People can hurt you. People can use you like you know things like that and people can cheat you like especially young women young girls um somebody can break your heart it's it's it's, it's important to know that all those things there are people in the world who will do all those things so that's what i learned and also um and also um i really uh, think that uh, it doesn't need to be uh, going to a temple or uh, oh by the way um, she also my pinny also used to take me to temples uh, a lot a lot so it doesn't need to be that but i think it's also important to have an activity and i think i said this in one of the episodes before uh, that you can do alone when times when you're alone i think it's important either going to a coffee shop or a library it doesn't have to be a temple or a temple or someplace spiritual uh, it's important to have some space where you can be by yourself and get peace. Um, otherwise, it's very important. Uh, it's uh, very easy to, during those times, um, to go the other way where you can uh, get into drinking or drugs or things like that. It's, it's That path is also there. But I think it's important to have something productive uh, where you can be by yourself in, uh, in hard times. But more than that, the other lesson is that yeah, there are bad people in the world <laughs> who won't think twice about hurting you. Good to be knowledgeable that there are people like that and be careful. So um, I'll continue uh, my next episode again. So bye.